please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I can't do anything to top that. I might have. <laughs> well, good evening and welcome to this grand old house. I don't know how far any of you want to pursue your careers in politics, but I will tell you that living in the White House has one great advantage. When a big dinner like this is over, you're already home. <laughs> and if I may say so, for one among us tonight, this dinner is a birthday dinner. Tricia Lott, best wishes. <laughs> and by the way, Tricia, I figure I'm especially well qualified to say happy birthday. I've had so many myself. <laughs> but it's an honor to welcome the, to the White House the freshman class of the historic 100th Congress. And while the House members and I met in the West Wing in December, this is the first chance we've had to get together with our spouses. So to you spouses, you who put up with the travel and the long hours and the rigors of campaigning, a special welcome from myself and especially from Nancy. I thought I could talk about just how deeply I believe in welfare reform, about the need to reduce the budget deficit still further, about the opportunity our nation has to advance the cause of freedom in Central America. Each of these issues is of vital importance, and none of us would have gotten into politics if we didn't think so. But a detailed discussion of the issues, well, it just seems somehow inappropriate to carry the business of the working day over into this a rare evening of relaxation. Then I thought I might talk about the need for bipartisanship. The American people gave the White House to the Republicans and the Congress to the Democrats. And that means the American people will demand of us that we work together. But to go further and talk about this or that upcoming vote, well, that too would have made this evening too much like the working day. So I thought instead I might say a few words about American history. Nothing very fi high flown, just a few words, if you will, about this house and its memories. A moment ago, I mentioned how good it is after one of these dinners to be able to go home just by walking upstairs. But there's something else about living in this grand old executive mansion, something that has to do with the two centuries of the American experiment in democracy. You see, when you go upstairs at night, here, somewhere in the back of your mind, you're always thinking about all those who preceded you in this house. And just down the hall from your own room is another bedroom, Lincoln's bedroom, furnished with pieces from his day. There's even the legend about the White House that Mr. Lincoln is still here. Now, as a matter of fact, people who've worked here for several presidents will go out of their way to tell you, yes, Mr. Lincoln is here. Now, before you start rolling your eyes, I want to tell you, don't worry, I've never seen him myself. <laughs> but, but whenever I, cons I consider the possibility that in some way Mr. Lincoln is still here, well, I feel sort of grateful to have him around. And come to think of it, there have been a few matters these days on which I would have liked his advice. <laughs> As you know, I'll have a few words to say about these matters tomorrow evening when I address the nation from the Oval Office. But there are special moments in this house, moments when the magic seems to descend and you can almost see those who once lived here. Except, of course, that it's not magic, it's, it's history, the memory of real people struggling with real issues, of real people, well, issues just as difficult as those that we're called upon to struggle with today. I guess that's what I wanted to share with you tonight, the feeling you get living in this house that all of us are participating in a long and noble history, and that one day our children and grandchildren will look back upon us and remember. There was one president's wife who used to hang the laundry in this room, and then there was the time when the British set fire to this house, and the wife of the then president 
came in and got that painting out of the frame and took it away to save it and bring it back so that it is here today. The knowledge that comes to you in short that for all its frustrations, public office is a privilege no words can quite describe. So to all of you, members and spouses alike, welcome once again. And if he is here, I know that Mr. Lincoln is pleased to have you join him. There are some other things, and particularly with the spouses here, I would like to mention that stories that you learn when you're around here a while. For example, the White House, you know, in the beginning was the whole executive branch. The press would hang out on the next floor above where the living quarters were, waiting to see who came in to visit the cabinet or other officers. The cabinet met here, and the offices were here up until the time of Theodore Roosevelt. And then I think you'd like to know that there came a day when Mrs. Roosevelt said to Teddy Roosevelt, if I'm going to raise six kids in this house, you're going to get your people out of here. <laughs> and he, he did. <laughs> and now Nancy and I look forward to greeting you all in the color rooms where we'll have coffee and liqueurs just down the hall. But thank you all very much for being here. It's been a great pleasure. God bless you all.